So yesterday we went to Armenia and we visited the San Alberto farm and another small farm very close to each other, five minutes away from each other. And uh, we got to see how San Alberto had professionalized their coffee uh, plantation. They're actually run like a company. So they, they are uh, not only uh, growing coffee, but they're also serving coffee on the farm and also getting tourists, visitors to, uh, to learn about coffee and how it's produced. And also uh, they do cupping sessions and uh, they do a very thorough job in also processing the coffee. Very, they pick out all the uh, unripes and stuff from the, from the red cherries, uh, which I've actually never seen uh, being done in Colombia. And then just uh, 30 minutes later we went to a small farm, neighboring farm, where I picked some coffee. It was quite difficult, especially now when the tree has both uh, immature and uh, ripe cherries on the same tree. And so you had to be very careful picking uh, coffee. And the, the slopes were like this, so it's very hard to stand and pick uh, coffee all day. A normal picker picks for 10 hours per day. Uh, I picked for 10 minutes and I was uh, you know, completely wet and sweaty and, and exhausted. So that's a really tough job. Afterwards, we took uh, the coffee from that farm. Uh, we took it to the cooperative and we sold it to the cooperative. He had two bags with 100 kilos of parchment total. And that gave him around $450 uh, for 100 kilos of parchment. And that'll end up as maybe 80 kilos of, of green coffee. Um, they sold the coffee uh, and then we took some of the coffees uh, as a sample and we tasted it later on in the afternoon. Coffee had a little problem with the ferment, so uh, it's probably been kept in the fermentation tank for too long. Uh, but still, uh, it wasn't extremely bad. Uh, it was not the worst on the table for sure. But uh, when we came to the, the uh, dry mill where the coffee is processed, uh, we were taking on a tour uh, to see how the parchment coffee is treated and sorted and selected and, and where all the stones are getting rid of and the parchment is removed. Uh, and the Armenia mill is quite big, so normally a small producer, if he wants to sell a micro lot, he doesn't send the coffee there. He sends it to Bogota. But uh, in Armenia they, they sort of mix a lot of coffee together and create profiles for you know bigger customers like uh, Nestle or, or Kraft or uh, you know big companies like that. Um, after a quick tour of the mill we did a cupping session with uh, different coffees from this area. Um, unfortunately it was the beginning of harvest so uh, the coffees were a little bit astringent yet uh, or still um, but uh, some of the best coffees had a very nice delicate fruity aroma uh, Bright acidity, but not very intense, and a very sort of creamy uh, body, which I found uh, quite interesting. So I'll definitely try to get some samples from Armenia and uh, take home and show the Norwegian people how uh, Armenian coffee tastes like. Today we're actually going to um, El Agrado, which is a, f a research farm in Armenia that I've been wanting to dry and go to for many years. A uh, very good friend of mine, Jaime Raul, used to run it. Uh, he he's not there anymore, so I'm sad I'm not going to be able to meet him, but uh, I'm sure there's other people there who know a lot about coffee. And uh, they're researching uh, anything from uh, how to plant coffee and, and cultivate coffee, uh, processing, drying, and so on. And we're also going to be able to make espressos, uh, do cup tastings, and uh, do a lot of fun stuff. So we're going to spend the whole day there and I'll be picking the brains of all the scientists there and uh, very much looking forward to it. So, see you soon.